Hi, everybody. I'm Sam Hyman, and welcome to another episode of Spotlight Sunday. Today's guest is a former Major League Manager, and he is also so thankful enough to be a part of our organization. It is Clint Hurdle. Clint, thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, Sam. Good to join you, and thank you for your patience in uh, facilitating uh, my technologically challenged person to finally get on board with this. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm glad we're, we're able to, to get this going. And first of all, how are you and your family doing during this new lifestyle that we're in? Well, we're safe and sound, um, and we're thankful and grateful that we're safe and sound. And um, all of our loved ones are safe and sound. Carlos folks, uh, Alan and uh, Dolores live in an uh, adult, you know, a senior living facility here. Um, they're quarantined, uh, but they're good. They're healthy. My folks live on the East Coast. I mean, her mom and dad, 91 and 89. Mm -hmm. My folks are 86 and 85. Uh, we, we jokingly told them we're going to bubble wrap them for, for a couple months, and then we'll just check on them later. We're, be, we're being able to facilitate and help out Carlos folks. My two sisters, Bobby and Robin, live on the East Coast, and they're 10 minutes from my mom and dad. So they're hands on there. Uh, my daughter Ashley's in Plano, Texas. She's in a safe environment. Uh, she's working from home, and my two children, uh, Madison and Christian, here with us. And we just started cyber homeschooling last Monday, so <laughs> it's another new phase of life for us. Yeah, very, very cool. Well, first of all, again, thank you so much for for taking some time out of your day. When you think back to the first time you heard about Baseball Miracles, what do you remember about it, and why did you initially decide to say, yes, this is something that I want to invest my time in? Yeah, it was kind of, you know, John had reached out to me. Gosh, I want to say I've been on board two years now. Um, John reached out to me, and he said he had an idea. And he said he wanted to run it by me. He wanted to give me time to think about it. He wanted to give us both time to pray about it. But he actually, you know, invited me to join in whatever capacity I would feel led. Uh, either as a silent partner, you know, board director, um, financial aid. Um, who knew? Uh, we weren't really worried about a title. We are just worried about availability and opportunity. So, actually, I'm involved in a few nonprofits. We're involved heavily in my daughter's nonprofit, Prodigal Syndrome. Daughter Madison was born with a, with a birth defect, and I'm a national spokesperson. We're involved in Pittsburgh heavily with some nonprofits. So, I want to make sure that if I got involved with another nonprofit, that I could give it the amount of time it deserved. Mm -hmm. uh, my, the commitment level I needed to put forth to make a difference, to have impact or an influence. And it wasn't just about writing a check once a month and sending money. Um, so I started digging into the cause. I started digging into John. I talked to a few other scouts about John. Um, and his heartbeat is throughout the game. Uh, he's a man that's very, very skilled in baseball scouting. However, his heart beats so clear and so loud for, for God, for Jesus. Um, that story kept resonating through the people that I reached out to. So then I just started checking into the board, what they were doing, who, what was baseball miracles, what was the, the mission statement. And I actually found out that it was really in its embryonic stages. And yes, there was a mission statement. Yes, there were some people on board. However, John was basically ham and egg in this thing. Um, uh, with a handful of people and doing a fantastic job. However, it was limited. You know, I've tried to do things. I know that feeling. Um, and then I just felt a pull, a gravitational pull, a spiritual pull to help, to help financially, to help uh, networking, to help uh, spreading the brand. Um, and then through more conversations, that's only a year later that I finally said yes and then became a board member. And as I shared with you all on that phone call, the, you know, the, the town hall meeting chat we had the other day, the growth of this program 
in the last two years. If, if this was a business, you know, you would say it's at 200% growth. The number of people he's drawn in, you know, and he does it through humility. He, he's, he's charismatic in a soft sense, but he's not a guy that's out front, you know, banging things and doesn't have a loud voice. He's got a lot of just positive, calming, heartwarming characteristics. And what I shared with you all, too, the number of young, smart, sharp people he's brought to this organization the last year blows me away. You're one of them. Um, we've got males, we've got females, um, we've got some other statesmen, but there's only a handful of us. It's, it's all been kind of peeled back and developed in such an organic way. The skill sets that he's brought, whether it's Kyle's skill set, your skill set, the other people involved now. Our media page, our web, you know, our website, we have a website like doing that really. And now so many things have taken on that it's been really cool to watch God grow this and the people he's brought together, the people that I'm locking arms with now, that I'm, I'm proud to lock arms with them, and the youthful energy that's been infused. Um, this concept that you've come up with and, and John's given the okay to, there's so many great ideas, so many creative, creative minds and good hearts working hand in hand to hand out gloves and hand out socks and hand out baseball to actually pass the game on generationally to other kids that would never have an opportunity to experience through the clinics and the missions. However, at the same time to share with them, you know, the hope and the care that comes with, you know, the relationship with Jesus Christ and with God. So uh, just humbled and happy to be a small part of it. Well, well, Clint, I can be the first to say I have uh, a lot of goosebumps after hearing you break that down. Very, very nice to hear you you share your thoughts on why Baseball Miracles is so important to you and what stands out the most about it. So with you being such a, a big baseball fan and a, a person that's been involved in, in baseball and, and softball for, for so long, how gratifying is it for you to see an organization like this do what it does and to be able to follow it and feel like, and, and know that you're a part of it. Well, that was one of the most, you know, the, one of the attractive uh, components of the whole program was the mission outreach. The fact that John wanted to give kids to get the baseball that would never get it any other way. And we've gone to some places that I can't even believe we've gotten there. And we've done some things within our own country, within the United States of America, which also is heartwarming for me. I'm just wired a certain way that, yes, we do need to reach out. We need to go on missions. We need help here as well. And I never want to lose sight of being able to help here as well. And John uh, has built the duality of our program and our mission statement that we're helping within the United States. There's some torn up places in the United States we've been able to to give and go to and help, not just give baseball lessons, but to give hope, right. uh, to help build a relationship, to help build a, a bond relationship with a father and daughter, father and son, grandfather, uh, whatever it might be. Um, and then now to see the mission statement of what our plans are moving forward and, and the vision that has been created. And I've got another phone call to make later this week to Cooperstown about a possible unique opportunity and, you know, um, the trips that have been made have been fantastic. The outreach has been fantastic. And so many different people have uh, been able to go. And this is one of the opportunities I'm looking forward to moving, to moving forward is that all these summer missions are unable to ever participate in. And now, you know, there'll be a right time. There'll right. be an opportunity where I can get involved and also go and, and be a part of it as we travel outward and share Um the game of baseball, the gift of baseball, and, and the gift of, uh, of God's grace and God's mercy. Certainly, certainly a blessing. What would be your message of encouragement to, especially the the more deserving children and their families right now, especially because we are in a, a situation that is extremely unprecedented. So for anybody that is out there that might be looking for additional words of encouragement. As a, as a member of Baseball Miracles, we obviously cannot go out at this point in time and, and conduct clinics, 
but I think our voice is so powerful right now. So what is your message to those people directly? Well, the wonderful thing about the game of baseball, and this is just a little small sidebar, because this, there's a much important message going on right now in the world than sport. Um, and I really think it's about pause. And it's about rebonding families, the small family unit, because um, that's where strength and power and hope is. Um, and what we're facing now has really touched in such hard ways. Um, you know, there's panic, there's uncertainty, there's anxiety. Um, and what we want to share is hope. And we've always been a nation of abundance and serenity. And now that's been pushed to the side. I really believe there'll be an all clear. There'll be a day when the sun will come out and we'll all move forward. What we're doing now to leverage that opportunity is important. So prayer is important. Thankfulness, gratefulness. There's an old wise Indian saying that there's two wolves inside of every person that are struggling. You know, and which one wins? Well, the one you feed the most. So if you hunt for good, you find good. If you hunt for bad, you find bad. What I've shared with my family, two things that we're trying to do here. Um, you know, the hand washing thing has become a thing again. And I'm sad to say, I, it wasn't a thing. I let it drop. I've let a lot of things drop mm -hmm. that I need as a family leader to put back in place at the forefront. We do societally as well. But I'm seeing the Lord's Prayer when I wash my hands. I wash my hands now. Ten times. Probably maybe more. It's embarrassing to say how many times I am compared to what I used to. Thank God I didn't count what I used to. But now, you know, to say the Lord's Prayer 20 times a day, that's powerful. And it's more than 20 seconds. So I'm covered clinically, biologically. Yeah. But it's taken on a different meaning. And I encourage my, my family to do it as well. The other thing, Sam, that I'm doing is, you know, in a, in a, in a program, uh, my personal daily program, the Serenity Prayer, has always been important for the last 20-some years. However, I remind myself now that the Serenity Prayer, and I say it at least three times a day. I try and say it at 10, I try and say it at 2, and I try and say it around 6, around those times. I've got to set on my, my clock. Right. But it's God who grants me the Serenity. Sam, it's not the stock market. It's not the supermarket. It's not a job. It's not the economy. It's not my wife. It's not my kids. It's not my mom and dad. They don't. They're important. They're, they all play a role there. But God is the one I'm looking for to grant me the serenity, to give me the hope, the strength, the endurance, the perseverance, the resolve to be steadfast, to hold fast, and to be a light in a time that can, can be dark and has been dark. And just to make sure that I'm consistent with my actions. Words are wonderful. We all, some people speak better than others. But at the end of the day, your action match. Your actions match your words. Are you intentional with the work you're doing? Baseball miracles has been another way for me to be intentional. Not just with my finances, but with my actions, with my words. To speak up, to share, to be an advocate. Um... And I want people to hear about our program. You know, we were fortunate over time. When I was with the Pirates organization. Our scouting director, Stevie Williams, joined up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's other people that I, there's people out there that I don't even know of within the game of baseball, major league baseball, that are going to join up. And cause some people ask me during the season, like, baseball miracles, you know, you're on the board of directors. What's the deal? I told them the deal. I said, I want to stand up. Two years, I didn't stand up for anything. There's some important things in my life now that I'm going to take a stand for. And Baseball Miracles takes a very important part, very important commitment for me to help make a difference and with people to lock arms with you and John, and Caroline, um, Samantha, Savannah, yeah. I mean, Kyle, and all the others. I mean, it's so, so humbling and it gives me a lot of peace. It gives me a lot of serenity to know that we're working. I will say to your point there, we are a very special organization in the sense that we are from so many different parts of the country. So we actually don't always get a chance to see each other in person on a regular basis. But when we go on the trips, as you know, our bond is united so quickly for a common cause. So 
to that you say what? I mean, that I feel like that right there is a grass root of, of what makes this organization so special. Well, the cohesion. <laughs> There's something to be said in life about, you know, people talk about equity. There's something to be said for sweat equity. There's something to be said for, you know, human collateral. Um, and us bonding together, no, you know what? We know it's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be so worth it. And what better, what better feeling than when you're in a small room with people? And that's why I've been, but I'm looking for my, my first mission trip with, with Baseball Miracles, to be in that small room together, yeah. to know that we're going to roll up our sleeves together. We're going to get, we're going to have to get dirty with it. Yeah. We're going to get real with it. But we can look around and know that everybody is invested in it. Because I've been in the locker room at the end of the season, so you look around, you know, there's 30 people and you can get, yeah, yes, yeah. No, he wasn't invested. He wasn't, you know, there's sometimes there's a couple people that aren't in. Yeah. And just on the calls I've been on, the functions I've attended, the conversations I've had, everybody here is in. We're all in. We're all in together uh, with John leading, leading the herd. Uh, and what a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful, humble, uh, comforting, uh, compassionate leader he is. Great to hear. You got any, uh, recommendations for working on your baseball and, and softball skills during this time? Any any sort of advice to, to the folks out there that are trying to get creative? The creative the, the creative minds will find a way to get things done right now, and most things are going to need to be done in your garage, um, basically. I mean, um, there's not a lot of outside opportunity. Um, but if you have, you know, it sounds crazy. But one thing I would encourage some kids to do right now, and, you know, my son, we have a gym here. My son's working out creatively. Um, there's nothing like old school jump rope. There's still nothing like old school swing a bat with a small weight on it just to increase strength. If you've got a drop net in a cage, there's nothing like taking that tee and moving it around. Or, or softball uh, for the girls that, that, that play any kind of rep you can get to keep swinging, yeah. to keep throwing if you can. And if you can't, to replicate those movements in some type of exercise or energy. Because there's a rhythm and rhyme to the game of baseball or softball. And you want to get a stronger arm? Yeah, it, it, you can do it in the gym. But if you throw more, your arm will get stronger. Yeah. If you want to develop your bat speed, yeah, you know, there's a little different ways to work out. But you swing a bat more, It'll get you better bat speed. Yeah. And there's still, you know, there's something to be said for jumping a rope. I believe in this with all my heart that players, and once they've done it, a jump rope, it'll get you in balance with yourself. You'll find your center, you find a rhythm. Even if you had none, you're gonna find some. You've got to, or you end up starting over all the time. But just find ways to be creative. And there's also good if they can pull up old games. Maybe favorite games that they've watched to recreate. I know we had a big hit in Pittsburgh a week or so ago. They replayed the blackout game from 2013, our first trip back to a playoffs in 21 years. It was the first winning season in 20 seasons. AT uh, AT&T Sports replayed the game. I didn't even know what was going on, and all of a sudden my phone starts blowing up left and right. But it was just fans and people that that knew me, whatever, but watching this game and the wonderful emotions that came from it. So. You know, to, to go get some highlight films because they're easily accessible on the net. You can find stuff. You can find throwing. You can find catching. You can find drill work that's done by pros out there. There's major league baseball guys doing it now. Be creative and hunt it, yeah. and and find ways to continue to leverage this pause time. So when we are back out, that we remember the lessons learned and then we put them in good place. Very well put, Clint. Very well put. And we just want to say thank you so much again for taking some time out of your busy day to join us and speak on behalf of Baseball Miracles as a special Spotlight Sunday guest. So thank you so much for your time. We, we really appreciate it. And I am very excited. I know everybody else is very excited to see what is to come with the future of the organization. The best is yet to come. I'm honored to serve and I'm humbled to help, Sam. Thanks, uh, thanks for your, your effort today as well.